Okay, hi. Um, today I want to talk about C callbacks and how we can make them a bit nicer to work with in C++. So what is a C callback? Um, it's a function pointer passed into a function as an argument, which is then invoked at a later time. And uh, in my examples, I'm going to assume that there's some way to pass some data into the callback. And I'm going to refer to that as a context in this talk. So there are two types of callbacks. And the synchronous callback, where the callback is called before the function returns. And the asynchronous callback, where the function returns first, and then the callback is called uh, at a later time. And uh, they both come in two different flavors. So the single shot callback, where the callback is called exactly once. And the multi-shot callback, uh, where the callback can be called multiple times. So here's a very simple example of a synchronous callback. So we have a function that takes a function pointer and a context. And inside the function, uh, we call the callback passing the context. Uh, so this is a synchronous callback because the callback is called inside the function. And then the function returns. If we wrap this in a detached thread, we get a, uh, an asynchronous callback because now uh, the C function will be turned first, and then once the thread has been created, the callback will be called. But asynchronous callbacks doesn't have to be invoked from a, from a separate thread. Uh, it could also be that you call first call one function that will store the callback in the context somewhere, and then sometime later you call another function that will invoke the callback. So let's look at a few real world examples. So first we have the QSort function. It's used to sort an array of data and you pass the array and the last argument is the callback function that is used to compare uh, two elements in the array. Um, so this is a synchronous callback because the callback function will be called inside the QSort function. And when QSort returns, the array will be sorted. And this is usually a multi-shot callback because uh, depending on the size of the array, it will be called, the callback will be called multiple times. And next we have uh, POSIX threads. We have the pthread create function that creates a new thread. It takes a callback that will be called um, from the newly created thread. And here we can also pass a context as the last argument. And this context will be received in the callback um, in the arg parameter. So this is an asynchronous callback because pthread create will return first and then the callback function will be called um, from the newly created thread once it has been created. And the last example is um, an example from GLFW, which is a library for OpenGL to manage, uh, create and manage windows. In this case, we can call a function to set the context, which is called uh, set window user pointer. And here the context will be tied to the window. And then we can set the key callback, which will be called when the user presses a key. So this is also an asynchronous callback. Uh, but the difference here is it won't be called from a different thread. It will be called from the main thread uh, when, the uh, when the user calls uh, a function called poll events. And this is also multi-shot uh, because it will be called every time the user presses a key. So what's wrong with C callbacks? Um, well, they only work with function pointers and non-capturing lambdas. And in C++, we probably want to be able to pass any type of callable object. For example, a capturing lambda or a function object with a state. So how can we do that? Um, we start with the easy case, which is wrapping a synchronous callback. In this case, we don't have any lifetime issues because everything is synchronous. So the, the idea here is to pass the callable object in the context. So we create a, a wrapper function that takes a callable object f and we take it by value because we want to be able to take its address. 
and then we call the C function. Uh, we pass a callback function, which we will look at that in the next slide. And the address to the callable object is passed inside the context here. And this is uh, what the callback function looks like. It's a template function because we want to, uh, we need to know the type of the callable object. And in the function, we static cast the context back to the original type, and then we just uh, call f. Uh, I've also marked the uh, callback function as no except here because if f throws, we don't want to propagate the exception into the C library. So we'll terminate instead here. So next up is how to wrap an asynchronous one-shot callback. So now we need to think about lifetime a bit uh, because we need to make sure that the callable object is alive once the callback is invoked. So the plan here is to heap allocate the callable object and pass a pointer to it in the context. And then when the callback is called, we will deallocate the memory. So we need to make some changes to our wrapper function here. So we'll take the callable object as a forwarding reference here. Yeah, so we need to decay the type of f because we don't want to store a reference type. And then we'll allocate the pointer with make unique. And we'll call the C function passing callback and a pointer to the callable object. And if the function returns zero, it means success in this case. We'll release the memory to the callback. Otherwise, uh, we need to handle the error. Uh, we could throw an exception or return some error code. And this is what the callback looks like in this case. So we'll again static cast the context back to the pointer type and put it inside a unique pointer that will handle the allocation. Then we'll get a reference to the callable object type and invoke it. And the last case is how to wrap an asynchronous multi-shot callback. So in this case, we can't deallocate the memory inside the callback because it will be called multiple times. Uh, so in this case, we need to make sure that the callable object is alive until the callback is stopped. So how do we know when it's stopped? Um, there's usually some function that you can call, and after that function is called, you know that the callback will no longer be called. Um, in the GLFW example, with the key callback, um, the, the stopping function is when you call destroy on the window. So when the window is destroyed, the callback will stop. So the idea here is to store the callable in a class as a member and stop the callback in the destructor. By doing that, we know that the object is alive until the callback is stopped. So I'll create a wrapper class here. And in this case, I made it a template. So the callable will be a, a policy class here. And we'll take, uh, pass it in, in the constructor and store it as a class member. And in the constructor, we'll call the C function, passing the callback. And in this case, I'm passing this pointer uh, as the context. Uh, we could have passed the callable's address if we wanted, but by passing the this pointer, we get access to other member variables or member functions if we, if we have the need for it. And inside the destructor, we'll stop the callback with the function that stops the callback. In this case, the callback function is a private static function. Uh, we need to make it static because we can't have the implicit this pointer in the C callback. Um, and then we'll static cast the context back to the wrapper class and call f. So um, the things to keep in mind when you're writing a wrapper for a C callback is first, is it, is it synchronous or asynchronous? Because as we've seen, we need to think about lifetime differently. And the same goes for if it's single or multi-shot. 
And uh, something I didn't cover here, but the callback could be invoked from a different thread. So you may need some uh, synchronizations. So hopefully you can use some of these ideas the next time you have the need to wrap a C callback. Thank you. Any questions? I have a maybe comment. Yeah. And that's uh, the context is very important. And I've seen some like vendor libraries in the context actually keep the, uh, a context available. And that's very nasty when you get to do things like this. And you will have to have a global manual, for example. But do you have any tricks to handle that? So the comment is um, some libraries don't provide a context or any way to pass a context. In this case, you need to use some global state. Uh, and do I have any ideas uh, how to manage that? And uh, <laughs> not really. You can't really tie the call to the callback. So if it's synchronous, you can put it into a static Going to generate another new function for every type of callable, but it's going to work. But for asynchronous, it's harder. Mm -hmm. So it's possible for synchronous. And then you can just you can just have a static copy of the of the function object inside your function and use that. Then it's accessible from the. But it's right. A, so so in asynchronous, we could. Different for every type of lambda, so it's going to generate. A new right. So in the synchronous case, we could have a static, um, static variable on the callable object um, to manage that. But it's harder for the asynchronous case. Uh, in that case, we need to like make sure that there's only one callback in flight at a time. I guess so. You could. If you can, if you can make sure that the types are always different. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> Yeah.